Welcome back to my channel, my dear friends. Today we are taking a look at the mindset in regards to our purpose in life. Last week we took a look at the purpose of purpose and what it means to actually have purpose and why purpose is even essential in our lives. But today we're taking a look at what the mindset can do for you when it comes to your purpose, the purpose that God has intended for you, the purpose that God created you for here on this earth. But as always, before we start, we're going to go into prayer and we're going to invite the Holy Spirit. We're going to invite Christ Jesus. We're going to invite Father God into our midst so that what we're discussing today will be beneficial to our lives and we can make use of it in our daily lives. Let us pray. And so, Father, we just want to bless your name and thank you for this opportunity to study your word. We thank you so much for allowing us to understand that there is a reason why we were created and that you created us with an intention and you created us with a purpose in mind that we must discover in order to fulfill our destinies here on earth. Father God, we thank you for the mind that you have given us, which is definitely one of the most powerful tools that you have created for us as individuals. And we ask that as we discuss your word, Father God, and look at some scriptures in terms of mindset, that you yourself will come down and you will teach us exactly what it is that you want us to understand about our mindset and how our mindset can influence us and move us forward in order to get to our destiny. Father God, we invite you, we invite Christ Jesus, we invite the Holy Spirit into our midst, wherever we're located here on this earth, listening to this word, listening to this message, we ask that you will come and you will penetrate our minds and you will teach us yourself and that you will make sure that what we learn today, Father God, both the teacher and the taught, will understand that you, Father God, you created the mind and that you want us to fulfill our destiny here on earth, but it starts off with our mind. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name. We glorify you, Father God, because you're so good and you're so kind and you're so wonderful to us. Glory and honor be unto your holy name. For in Christ Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And so like I was saying, my dear friends, last week we took a look at purpose and the purpose of purpose and why purpose is necessary. And I shared with you that once you understand your purpose, it leads you to your destiny. And once you understand where your destiny is, it will take you to your place of rest. And then ultimately your place of rest will take you to your place of accomplishment. And that is what Father God wants for each and every one of us. He wants us to discover our purpose here on this earth so that we can get to our destiny, so that we can have a place of rest. And a place of rest is where we are really just chilling, guys, where we don't have any stress and that we're able to pay our bills with no stress, no complications. And then ultimately we are accomplished so that when we return back to our Father in heaven, we will be able to tell him what we did here on earth. We don't have any excuses that we're going to give him. We don't have any complaints that we're going to give him. We're just going to tell him that, Daddy, we did the work that you have sent us to do on earth. And that is what God wants from each and every one of us. But my dear friend, you you have to understand that in order to accomplish your purpose, in order to get to your destiny, in order to get to your place of rest, in order to be accomplished on this earth, you must change your mindset. A lot of times when you discover and in interact with people, you will see that what changes from one place to the next or from one person to the next, one environment to the next, from one country to the next is simply their mindset. When your mindset is built and rooted in the word of God, when your mindset has been trusted in the word of God and trusted in the word of God, then you are able to accomplish what he has sent you for. There is absolutely nothing here on earth that we are not able to accomplish. Why? Because Father God has told us that I have given you all the tools that you're going to need on earth. I have given it unto you. It is your job your responsibility to activate it. No human being can do that for you. No man can do that for you. No woman can do that for you. No child can do that. No friend can do that for you. No, nobody. Only you can do it. He has told us that I give you what you asked for according to the power that works within you. So that means that your mindset has to be renewed. Your mindset has to be changed. Your mindset has to be rooted in his word so that you accomplish your destiny, so that you get to your purpose. Turn with me to the book of Romans 12. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I'm sure a lot of us can even quote this scripture off the top of our heads, but turn with me. I'm reading from the King James Version. And here we have Paul, Brother Paul. And we all know that Paul has the, he was given the opportunity to write about two thirds 
of the New Testament. And he was continuously writing to the churches that he was going to. He was a missionary at one point and he was going from one place to the next, teaching them the word of God, sharing with them the word of God, sharing with them that God is able to do what you want him to do as long as you believe in him and you obey his word. And so now we get into the book of Romans chapter 12, verses one and two. And it specifically says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then he goes into verse two, which tells them, and be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Brother Paul is talking to the church in Rome and he's telling them that I'm praying for you. I'm begging of you that you will present yourself holy, a living sacrifice unto your father in heaven. And that you should also not be of this world. You live in this world, yes, but your thinking should not be like that of this world. It should not be like the next person who is in this world, who is living this worldly life and who is doing all of these worldly things. Paul is saying that's not what God wants from you. He wants you to present yourself a living, holy sacrifice unto him. And then also to renew your mind, be transformed in your thinking. There's a version that says it like that. Be transformed in your thinking so that you can do the will of God for your life, which is perfect, which is good, and which is acceptable unto him. The only way that you can get to your destiny, my dear friends, is by changing your thinking. I think I've shared it at some point in one of my studies or maybe a podcast that I've done that when I read Numbers 23, 19, that God is not a man that he can lie. My prayer life changed. The way I view God changed. The way I view life changed. Because I now knew that I was dealing with a heavenly father who could, number one, not fail me. Who, number two, cannot lie. Why? Because it's impossible for him to lie. God has absolutely no capacity for lying. He doesn't even have the strength to lie. And so when I read Numbers 23, 19, it told me that he cannot lie to me. And so because of that, my thinking towards God changed. There are things that we pray for. There are things that I'm praying for. Even though I don't see those things yet, I have not seen the manifestation, but he has also told me that when you pray according to my word, I will answer you. When you pray according to my son, in my son's name, I will answer you. And so even though I don't see the manifestation of those things yet, even though I have not seen these things come into my life, come into my family, come into my surroundings yet, I believe on his word. I believe in his word because my mind has changed. My thinking has changed. He has told me. I cannot lie to you, Adiola. I don't have the ability to lie to you. I cannot even tell you oops. My mom taught me that. God cannot say oops. And like we young children say today, he cannot say my bad. God cannot say my bad. I didn't mean to say that. I actually meant to say X, Y, and Z. It's only human beings that can say that. But God is telling us through Paul in the book of Romans, be transformed in your thinking. Change the way you think about life. Change the way you see life. Change the way you see things around you. You may not be rich, but say it, claim it. You may be of bad health, ill health. That's why he says, let the weak say, I'm strong. Change your thinking. When you change your thinking, friends, everything trickles. It's a ripple effect. Your thinking changes, the way you carry yourself changes, the way you talk, it changes, the way you interact with people changes, the way you see other people, it will change, the way you see other cultures, it will change, the way you will see other everything, anything, friends, it will change. Why? Because your thinking changed. In order to get to your destiny, in order to accomplish the goal that Father God has created you to accomplish here on this earth, you must, my dear friend, change your thinking, be renewed in your thinking. I want us to take a look at a very important character in the Bible, in the Old Testament. His name is Moses. Let's go to the book of Exodus. All right, Exodus, we're going to start from chapter two and we're going to skip around and we're going to paint this picture of Moses because it wasn't until Moses changed his thinking that he was able to accomplish what God wanted him to accomplish. It wasn't until Moses was able to 
actually sit down and probably talk to himself and say, you know what? I have a God in heaven who loves me. I have a God in heaven who cannot fail me. It wasn't until then that Moses was able to do the work of God. It wasn't until then that God was able to use Moses. And sometimes, my dear friends, I can tell you the truth. If your thinking doesn't change and God is telling you constantly, I need you to change the way you think. I need to, I need you to think differently on this situation. I need you to see this situation differently. If you refuse to do that, God will not be able to use you. God will not be able to put anything in your hands for his kingdom because your thinking is still minute. Your thinking is still of the world. You, you are using your ability, your human ability to calculate things for the kingdom. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Let's go into Exodus. Like I said, Exodus, we're going to start from the chapter, the second chapter where we're going to look at Moses. In fact, let me just summarize Moses for you. Moses was a Hebrew boy. And if you read starting from Exodus chapter one, you will see that Pharaoh at the time, because Joseph had already went to the land of, of Egypt and his family had joined him. But Joseph and his family and his brethren and even the Pharaoh that knew Joseph, they have all died. Now there's a new Pharaoh. And this Pharaoh is looking at the children of Israel that, wow, there's so many of them. So many of them, like, let's do something to these people so that we can get rid of them so that they don't become more mighty than us, the Egyptians. This is what Pharaoh is saying. And so they begin to now torment the Israelites, they began to use them. They began to abuse them. They began to just do all kinds of things towards them. And they were crying out to God that, God, look at us. We're in this foreign land. Look at what's happening to us. Aren't you going to save us? Aren't you going to help us? And so unfortunately, because Pharaoh was just so interested, the new Pharaoh was so interested in getting rid of the children of Israel. He now said, let us begin to kill the male borns, the males that are born into this land. Let's kill them. And you can imagine that why is it that he chose boys? If we kill the boys and there are not enough boys to marry these girls, they will not continuously populate. They will not begin to overtake our country because the Bible tells us in chapter one that even though they were, be, they were in bondage in Egypt at that time, even though Pharaoh was plaguing them, they, became, <laughs> they continued to grow. They became more populous in the land of Egypt. And so they were getting so frustrated so now, of course, Moses was born and his mother, she, she raised him. Of course, the law was out. They need to be killed, but he was saved. His mother was taking care of him for three months. And because she didn't want anything else to happen, she now put this baby into the Nile River. And Pharaoh's daughter was by the Nile River and she saw the basket in which baby Moses was located in. She picked up the basket. She saw that it was baby Moses. His sister was there. She now asked, should I go and call a Hebrew woman to come and take? Of course, the mother came to take care of her son. She raised him. And then eventually she gave the son Moses to Pharaoh's daughter as her son to be raised by her. So Moses now grew up in the Egyptian royal family. We all know that. Moses grew up into this Egyptian royal family. But then one day as the, the, Egyptians were tormenting the Israelites. He saw that there was a slave master. He saw that there was a slave master that was just tormenting some of the slaves, some of the Israelites. And so what did Moses do to this Egyptian? He killed him. Moses thought nobody saw him. Moses thought that no one saw him. But then the next day, Moses was confronting two men and the men now said, well, do you want to kill us like you killed the Egyptian just yesterday? And so Moses ran away. He ran away. He fled from the land of Egypt. He crossed the river and he now entered to where it's called Midian. And Moses was there for a very long time, my dear friends, running away from his problem, not even understanding that he was about to be used mightily by God. And so now, and by the way, if you study the Bible, you will see that Moses was in the land of Midian for about 40 years. That's a long time. Some of us were doing the same thing. God is telling us that this is what I want you to do, but he wants us to change our thinking and we begin to run away from God forever. And that's the reason why some people don't get to their destiny is because they don't want to listen to God. And so God now heard the cry of the Israelites in the land of Egypt. He wanted to save his people and he knew that I have a vessel that I can, that I can use to save these children of mine. His name is Moses. He now appears to Moses in the burning bush. He speaks to Moses and tells Moses that this is what I want to do with you. This is what I want to do for the children of Israel. This is how I want to save them. I want you to go into this land, go back to Egypt and begin to deliver my children from the land of Egypt, from Pharaoh. 
Pharaoh's heart is going to be hardened. He's going to say no. He's not going to want to, um, to oblige by what I'm telling you to tell him. So I'm going to do this work through you, Moses. You are the one that I'm using to do this work. And you know what Moses now does? He begins to question God. His mindset wasn't changed, guys. What he left in Egypt, he ran away because of fear of being killed. He now gets to Midian and God is telling him, God directly telling him through his angel that I'm going to do this for the people of Israel. And Moses is questioning God. Moses is concerned about what everybody else thinks. We do the same thing. Moses is questioning God, but what if they don't believe me? What if they say I'm telling a lie? What if they say I'm just making it up? What if they're saying this? What if they're saying that? And God tells him, just tell them I said it. I am that I am is the one sending you. And so Moses was so adamant about asking God, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. Let's look at it from chapter four, Exodus chapter four. We're going to read verses one through five. It says, and Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say the Lord had not appeared unto thee. He's making excuses. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and he caught it and it became a rod in his hand that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers and God of Abraham and God of Isaac and God of Jacob had appeared unto thee. Because Moses was asking God, what if they don't believe me, God? What if they say, no, it's not God that's sending me to, to those people, to the Israelites. What if they say, no, you're making this up, Moses. You ran away. First of all, you ran away, Moses. Why would you be coming back and thinking that we're going to believe you? Moses, it's been so many years that we've seen you. But God is telling him, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Show them this rod that's in your hand. If they say they don't believe you, cast it onto the ground. It will become a serpent. Then pick it back up by the tail. It will become back a rod so that they will understand. He still further asks God more questions. God, you know I'm a stammerer. God, you understand that I can't speak right. God, you know that I can talk eloquently. And now God gives him another reply. We're in still chapter four, verses 10 through 12. It says, and Moses said unto the Lord, oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Was God asking him that? And the Lord said unto him, who have made man's mouth or who make it the dumb or deaf or the seen or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. God has told us he has given us what we need, friends. But we have to change our thinking. It wasn't until Moses' thinking was changed. It wasn't until it was renewed that he was able to confidently go back to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel out of this bondage they were in, in the land of Egypt. We have to change our thinking. Which Egypt are you in that God is trying to deliver you from that you continuously push yourself back because of the way you think? Is it because you don't see the money in your bank account? Is it because you don't live in that house today? Is it because you don't have that job today? Is it because you're not married yet? Is it because you don't have those children that you're begging God for? Which Egypt are you in that you're holding yourself back? You need to change your thinking. Remember Romans 12, 2 tells you, but be ye transformed by by the renewing of your mind, renew it every day, change it every day. What does renew mean? To change, to make new, change it every single day so that God can work through you to get you to your promised land, to get you to your destiny. If we take it further and we now begin to look at the children of Israel and now they have gotten out of the land of Egypt. They have crossed the Red Sea. They have seen the miracle that God has done for them. They got to the Red Sea. There was no way for them to escape. You can imagine Moses standing at the tip of the Red Sea and he's looking like, God, you said you will take us out of this thing, out of this country, out of this land. Why is it that when we get to this Red Sea, we see this big body of water 
for us to be able to cross. How are we going to do it, God? And God said, Moses, I've already told you, I will do what I need to do for you. This rod that's in your hand, cast it forward. And did you see what happened? The Red Sea parted ways. They walked on dry land. But imagine if Moses' mind was not renewed and if he was listening to the murmuring that was taking place behind him as in, Moses, what are you trying to do to us? Do you really have intention to kill us? But God is telling them, I will make a way. Just move forward. Change your thinking. Just move forward. Change your thinking. Just move forward. That's what God was telling the children of Israel. They got into this land of Egypt because there was a famine. Remember? That's how they even got there in the first place. God made a way for them. Now he's trying to get them out of Egypt to take them to their own promised land. And so they were complaining. Their thinking had not changed. That is the reason why they were in the wilderness for so many years, a journey that should take about 11 days. Yes, about 11 days. They were there for what? 40 years. Why? Because their thinking had not changed. If you don't change your thinking, friends, if your mindset does not change, you cannot get to your promised land. God never told you that the journey will be completely smooth. No. But he has told you that I promise you a safe landing. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He does not say that there will not be storms. There will not be challenges. They, wear, they, they will exist. Those things will be part of the journey. But he has promised us that I can never fail. I will never fail. Just change your thinking. When you change your thinking into this Holy Ghost anger type of thinking and knowing that your father in heaven cannot lie, everybody around you may look at you like you have lost your mind. And that's fine. Because when your blessings come, they will be the first ones to line up to listen to the testimony. But you have to change the thinking, friends. You have to do away with negative thinking, negative thoughts. Paul told them in Rome, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can accomplish your purpose in life. That purpose is good. It's acceptable. It's perfect unto God. God has designed every one of us to reach our promised land. He wants us to get there. And but because the devil is in this society, going back and forth every single day, looking for whom he wants to devour, if you create a loophole for him, he will use you. But if you stand in the word of God, if you are rooted in the word of God with your mind being transformed every day, you will accomplish your destiny. You will get to your place of rest. You will be accomplished all because you've discovered your purpose. Change your thinking, my friend, so that you get to your purpose, so that you get to your destiny, so that you get to your place of rest, so that ultimately you will be accomplished in the Lord. Friend, I hope that this message of today has truly blessed you, and I pray that you will begin to implement what you've learned today in your own personal life and in the life around you. You can have what you say as long as you understand that you have a purpose here in life that you must fulfill and it must be found in God. It must be found in Christ Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to be prosperous all the time. He never wants us to suffer, even though sometimes we have to because of the, the nature of life. But he wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to get to your destiny. And you, by the grace of God, my sincere prayer for you is that you will get to your destiny. If you have not yet already, hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or concerns or anything you want me to talk about, leave it down below in the comment section. I will be sure to get back to you. Thank you so much, my dear friend, for watching. Go in peace and God bless you. Bye, guys.